Hi there, welcome to another episode of In the Cut with Alfred Lyon. So, last couple of videos um, that I had, a couple guys asked some questions uh, in the comment section. And uh, let's see, one of them was uh, Dan Rudolph, and he asked, uh, how, how do I go about cutting off carbide shanks? That's probably a good question for a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would do it. And then another guy, uh, Pete Brubaker, asked for more information on a KOLE grinder. Now the KOLE grinder, we have, I don't know, 15 of them or something like that, and a couple of clones. And these are wonderful machines because, uh, you know, they're universal grinders, uh, not in the sense as much as, like, say, the uh, Cincinnati number no. 2, where you have a, a, a head that can swivel and you basically have an actual 5-axis grinding machine. Um, but in the sense that you can do a lot with them. Uh, if, you, if you have enough accessories, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do with them. You can, you can grind cylindrical, you can, uh, you can flute, you can grind cutting edges, you can uh, pull helical cutters if you have the right accessories, uh, you can grind ends, you can uh, surface grind to some extent, you can grind flats, you can do high speed steel, you can do uh, solid carbide. Uh, they're just wonderful American made machines. Um, and I'll go over a couple styles, uh, sizes that we have and uh, see where that goes. All right. And I'll also try to give you information on the uh, type of diamond wheel I like to use for cutting off shanks. Okay. So this is uh, one of our KOLEs. This is the smaller version. This is the BA960. And it's a 26 inch long table. And uh, you can grind almost any kind of cutter in here uh, if you have the right accessories like I said uh, you can grind ends you can grind uh, neck relief you can uh, grind full form cutters uh, and, and everything else um, so let's see so it has a, a Y an X got a Z right here you can spin it up and down you can you also have a nut here that you loosen and you can swivel the uh, wheel head and you can also loosen these things here and do kind of a rapid adjustment to get uh, you know anywhere where you need to be in your desired uh, range of grinding. You can also loosen these Allen screws and the table can twist you know um, about 15, you know, I've actually tilted it about 45 degrees sometimes, but I really needed to get some reach on it. So you can do a lot of stuff with this thing. Um, it also has a uh, half inch horsepower motor. And then right now the, spin, the pulleys are the same size. So that means the spindle is going to go its regular speed, which is about 3,500 RPM or so. Uh, if, you, if you put a larger pulley back here, then it's gonna increase the speed. Smaller pulley down there will go even faster. You put a larger pulley there and a smaller pulley here, you're gonna go slower on the RPM for the wheel speed. So that's how that's adjusted. Um, then its larger cousin here is uh, the BA, or the, yeah, the B2 2060, and that has a 36 inch table. And so basically you can do longer things on there. Like if you were set up on centers and you were grinding, say, uh, relief on a long on a long reamer you can go you know much longer you know 10 inches longer really and uh so you know like this one here he's set up he's about to start grinding uh, the diameter on this solid carbide pc without centers being held by one of our accuholds in a work head with a 5c uh, attachment and the finger here or, or steady as some people like to say is uh this is a homemade job by us because the ones that come from kole uh are kind of small and we don't get the reach we need to get. So they basically they have a spring-loaded finger um, that allows for the the, the tool to be uh, have a steady right at the center line of the cutter, and then as you index over, you come right back up to it. Uh, a lot of people when they're grinding uh, cutters, uh, like regrinding or something like that, there's a collar. Uh, let's see if we can find one with a collar. Um, and you can finger on the collar like this. The problem is uh, then you're not oriented to the cutter. Uh, now if you have a flat on your cutter and you're using a 
uh, an, a holder like this with a screw hole, then maybe you, if the flat's oriented to the center line, then, then you could use it that way. But most accurate for us is the finger off the flute. Um, so now the next thing that I was going to do is I was going to show you guys how to uh, cut off carbide blanks, or actually, I take that back, how I cut off carbide blanks. Um, I like to use an Orton wheel. And you can get wheels from uh, Greenlee or anywhere else really uh, to do this. As long as it's a diamond wheel. I like the 220, 220 grit wheels. Or a, um, yeah, is that the grit? I always get confused at hardness versus grit. Because uh, you, as you can see, it's 220-R100. And, and that, that makes a difference. And B99, these are all uh, have to do with uh, the, the composition of the diamond. And, uh, but... Typically, I think of the grit as the 220 version there, and the R as the hardness. Um, and so this is just a 50 thousandths wide diamond wheel with a steel body, one inch and a quarter uh, ID for the spindle. And I have these two uh, spacers that I, put, I sandwich together over the wheel to give, to give the wheel rigidity, all right? Uh, other things uh, that you need for these machines, a 3 quarter and 11 sixteenths open end wrench. That's because we've got all these uh, T-bolts that we're constantly going through. I'm trying to look for some. Let's see if i got it lying around. I should have picked these up first. Okay, right over here. Here we go. Anyway, so kind of like a mill in that you got some uh, T-bolts, uh, but these are much smaller with a 3 8 16 thread. Okay, so right now what I have is I have this uh, workhead, this KOE workhead that's all beat up, set up with a 5C and a half inch AccuHold, one of our extension holders. And what, was I gonna, what I was going to do is I was going to cut this, some of this shank off. This is a half inch solid carbide form tool. And say you were running it and for whatever reason you need a solar, smaller uh, shank, shorter shank, I'm going to show you how to do that. So uh, I'm going to mount that wheel. And I'll show you how to cut that. Okay, so if you notice before when we were looking at the um, spindle, it had a half inch uh, arbor. Well, and then when I showed you the wheel, it has an inch and a quarter arbor. So what we do is we make these little spacers here, and we make them of all different widths. And also we make them out of plastic also. So what I did was I assembled the wheel with, with the flanges, and I put a spacer in the middle. So now I'm going to throw it on the spindle. Alright. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take my uh, blank that I want to cut some off of. I'm going to put it business end in, in our active hole here. Now you could put it in a collet also. Uh, that, would, that would work. But what we use here uh, is our active hole because let's say you want to cut a whole bunch of tools all the same length. Our active holds come with a stock pin. Okay? So you can put a pin in the back there and that way when you put the, the blank in the front it'll always stop at the same spot. I mean, not to the 10th or anything, you know, because it just won't happen. But it'll work better than uh, just kind of eyeballing or scale and it's faster. Uh, not to, you know, so anyway, there's that. You also notice I have a cool mist set up, okay? And uh, just using regular uh, uh, water-based uh, grinding coolant. Um, I think we're, uh, over here we might even use the cool mist coolant. Uh, we also have, uh, central air uh, with, that sucks it out to get filtered um, but I have it off to try and keep it a little bit quieter out here okay so uh, I have a piece of plastic set up back here because I don't want to get mist everywhere so basically if I was trying to be really uh, exact here I'd probably scale it now uh, let's say I want to take off a half inch or something like that so if my wheels for uh, 50 thousandths I'd set that at 450, right? No, it's not rocket science. Okay, so then I'm gonna turn it on. I can't remember if this is a little loud or not. Let's see. 
pretty loud, so I'll try to talk loud. And then when, as soon as I put the spray mist on, now we're even louder. So let's see if I can get a little closer so that I don't have to yell. Okay, so some people like to uh, cut these things off by just plunging right in and cutting them off. Personally, uh, I like to uh, have it be a little bit flatter. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go in like 50 thousandths and, or 100 thousandths and I'll roll so, uh, until it's all the way off. And I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to empty it in wide until it hits. And then I'm going to go in 50 thousandths. And then I'm going to rotate the work head spindle until I'm all the way around. Now, you might have wanted, noticed that I didn't indicate the wheel end. If I'm just doing something like this rough, I don't bother indicating the wheel end. Wheels cut better when they're rough. And when they're not round, they cut even better. Now the wheel's gonna wear out faster. So if you buy one for your shop and you wanna do this, uh, your wheel's gonna last longer. It'll just take you a little longer to cut something. So once it's all the way through, I'm gonna go in another 50,000. And as far as the speed that I'm rolling at, I go until I feel like there's the wheel slowing down. Uh, because the half, in, half horsepower motor is gonna, uh, I can stop it if I wanted to. So once I'm all the way through or close to it, I'm going to empty it in again. Another 50,000 or so. The way the Ys work on these uh, tail leads is one turn is 100,000. So if I go half turn, 50,000, so I don't have to look at the knob or anything to know that. Now, there's going to be a point where it's just going to break off without rolling. Especially with the wheel out of round like it is. Now out of round it's probably five ten thousands out, so it's not like it's terrible. Now I think it's enough, I'm just gonna go all the way in and cut it off. Alright, so once I cut it off, I go ahead and go over a little bit more to get that pit off. And then I come out, turn the pulling off, let's turn this loud uh, spindle off. And we'll pull it out. So there you go. You got a tool that's now half inch shorter. Uh, I would also go and hand grind, uh, if, if you had another diamond wheel, uh, a little chamfer on there so that you don't hurt your holder, uh, especially if you're putting in an end mill holder. If you're putting in a collet, you're, you're okay because it's kind of wide open. But otherwise, this is an H6 shank, so that means it's about three tenths under and it's real straight and real round. So uh, if you have a good end mill holder, uh, you know, set screw style or something like that, it's going to be a tight fit even though it's undersized. So there you go, I cut it off. And uh, that's it. Next thing, clean up. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or more you wanna see, let me know. Thanks, bye for now.